Well, Hamas has threatened to execute the 100 or 160 people that they are holding hostage if Israel targets Gaza. In an audio recording, a Hamas spokesman said in the face of indiscriminately attacking our residential areas, killing women, children and the elderly, and as our enemy does not understand the values or ethics, I mean, how can they speak of values and ethics? Then, anyway, this is the Hamas statement. They say, we announce that any targeting of innocent civilians without warning will be met regretfully by executing one of the hostages in our custody and we will be forced to broadcast this execution. It is a final warning and it is an ultimatum. So Hamas, they're saying that they're going to start executing hostages and broadcast the video of it. I mean, this is... We're talking ISIS-style beheadings here. You know, public videos of executions of innocent, innocent women, children, families, the elderly. Here's what Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel's Prime Minister, had to say. Israel is at war. We didn't want this war. It was forced upon us in the most brutal and savage way. But though Israel didn't start this war, Israel will finish it. Hamas will understand that by attacking us, they've made a mistake of historic proportions. We will exact a price that will be remembered by them and Israel's other enemies for decades to come. Shadow Minister for Home Affairs, Senator James Patterson, joins me now. James Patterson, I mean, how does Israel handle this now? Israel has to retaliate. It has to crush Hamas, these terrorists. It has to protect its citizens. What do you think we're going to start seeing at public videos of executions? Shari, in this conflict so far, we've had a lot of the usual business as usual rhetoric that Israel has a right to exist and Israel has a right to defend itself. But this goes far beyond just the normal border skirmishes or clashes or small scale attacks that we've seen in the past. This is the most serious assault on the sovereign state of Israel, at least since 1973 in the Yom Kippur War, but arguably it goes back even further than that. And so Israel is going to have to respond in a very decisive fashion. There is no liberal democracy in the world that would tolerate having a terrorist state on its borders that poses an existential risk to its people in perpetuity. Any state, any democracy, including Australia, would want to deal with that and deal with that decisively, and I expect that they will do so. Unfortunately, uh, that will involve civilian casualties on the Palestinian side, and that is because that's what Hamas wants. Hamas undertakes these operations by design to try and ensure that there are Palestinian casualties so that they can use that as a propaganda tool against Israel and say, look at all these innocent civilians that have been killed. But they take steps to make sure that happens. For example, they include, they host their munitions in civilian areas, in apartment buildings, in schools, even in hospitals, because they know that the Israeli Defence Force will be reluctant to target them, and they know if they do target them that the innocent civilians will be killed in the process. Mm. So any civilian deaths that occur from here on in are solely the responsibility of Hamas who has initiated this conflict. Even so, it's going to be just truly horrifying if we enter that phase of, of the execution of hostages. Um, James, Jess Malcolm, a journalist at The Australian, has, brought, has put up a story this afternoon looking at the response of Tony Burke and Chris Bowen to these attacks in Israel. Tony Burke failed to condemn a preacher in his electorate or failed to properly condemn a preacher in his electorate who said he was elated by the atrocities in Israel. And Chris Bowen, meanwhile, uh, hasn't even commented at all. He just says he supports what Anthony Albanese has to say. What's your reaction to two senior members of the Albanese government reacting in this way to what have been some of the worst terror attacks this decade? Shari, believe it or not, in Canberra, both Tony Burke and Chris Bowen fancy themselves as future leaders of the Labor Party and future leaders of this country. Well, they have demonstrated a total absence of leadership in this. Some of the worst instances of protests and incitement to violence in Australia have happened in their electorates. And they should take a leadership responsibility and step up and say, this is not OK, this is not acceptable and we don't stand for it. And they should stand with the people of Israel, the innocent civilians of Israel, the men, women, children, the elderly, who've been murdered in their streets, murdered in their homes, abducted, kidnapped, taken back to Gaza and are right now being tortured and held hostage by a terrorist state. Uh, these are totally unacceptable things and any political leader who fails to condemn them unequivocally and clearly is failing a test of leadership and should be ashamed of themselves.
are just failing basic human decency and human values. I mean, how can you put politics? How can you... How, I mean, these, this, these are the people that clearly they're courting the votes of. It, it's truly shocking. James, I also want to ask you about your reaction to the Opera House scenes last night. I'm deeply disturbed by what we've seen at the Opera House last night, Shari, and I am worried that similar protests are planned in Melbourne tonight, and I fear that we will see similar scenes again. Uh, these protests have struck fear in the hearts of the Jewish community in Australia, who are worried about what it means to them that people are so willing to so openly and brazenly express their hatred and contempt for their fellow Australians who happen to be of Jewish uh, heritage. Uh, it's an appalling thing. It should not happen in this country, and it says something very profoundly depressing about this country that people think this is an appropriate way to behave. The organisers of these rallies need to take responsibility for this. They need to police their own movement and make sure the people who engage in this behaviour never do so again. Because there's one accusation that pro-Palestinian activists object most strongly to, and that is that when they're accused of anti-Semitism. Well, we saw anti-Semitism on the streets of Sydney last night, displayed by Palestinian activists, and any Palestinian leader in Australia who refuses to unequivocally condemn it is guilty by association. All right, James Patterson, thank you so much for joining me this evening.